Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. I'm Becky and today we're going to be looking more at DIY inflatable forms. I'm prototyping for an inflatable architecture project. Right now what I'd like to show you is this bag that I use to pipe this vinyl cement onto sheet vinyl. In my previous videos, I left some cement in this bag to see how it would behave. It definitely dried up, so this is not a great way to store it. I actually have three squeeze bottles that I'm gonna be testing in my next video. So I'm gonna show you what happened to this plastic bag when the vinyl cement dried in it. It comes out. It doesn't even harm the plastic bag at all. So I thought this was interesting and worth sharing. This looks like some creepy, like, human fat tissue or something. <laughs> This is kind of cool. Today what I'm going to be doing is talking about my electronic circuit and talking about different software or coding that we can use to create different inflation patterns or inflation behaviors that might serve projects in different ways. I'm going to make another form, one that's a bit more complex, and we're going to inflate it in a couple of different ways and, and kind of like test the limits and test boundaries. I actually have a large amount of sheet vinyl coming in uh, tomorrow and I also have a new applicator coming in tomorrow. I talked about the squeeze bottles I'm gonna be trying those out Tomorrow and hopefully create something really big so stay tuned for that But for today we're gonna keep it small scale with what material I do have and I'm gonna see what happens with different code uh, that I'll share with you on my website, which I'll link in the description box below. Okay, well, I'm gonna make the new form now All right, so I am standing in front of the spray booth that has a pretty powerful ventilation system that I've been doing all of my vinyl cement work under. I'll be turning the ventilation on later because it's really noisy. So what you're about to see is me gluing the latex together with the vinyl cement, but a couple special things that you might notice. I have marked and measured where I want to apply my glue because on this form I'm going to be creating chambers for the air to pass through in sequence. You're also going to see that I'm going to glue one section at a time and then stick it together. It's time consuming because you have to wait two to five minutes in between each glue application for it to be ready to stick together. It's worth it because if you don't do it one at a time, I found I will have leaks. The other thing that you're going to notice is that I'm using a piping bag, just a Ziploc bag with a hole cut at the bottom. The piping bag allows me to achieve a lot more of the precision that I need for these complex geometries. In the future, I'm planning to use squeeze bottles. I'm going to be testing out how it might be to work with that as a tool, but also to store the glue in that uh, for long-term use. All right, let's get started. Alright, here we go. We're going to test this new prototype. Let me just plug in the pump. Okay, so I do have a leak. It did blow up as planned, but let me go patch this before we continue with the different types of behaviors. Ooh, I popped it. 
Well, I was looking for the leak, and let me tell you, I found one. <laughs> this is the point of failure. It inflates in this chamber, it passes into this chamber, it spring a leak here, and then it's supposed to move on to this chamber, but it popped open this weaker seam first. I'm gonna patch this leak, and then I'm going to inflate it again and see what happens. Well, oops, we exploded our inflatable. I guess now would be a good time to explore some of those other inflating behaviors we were talking about. So here we are in Arduino. Let's see what we have right now. We have the pump sent to pin 9. We have the pin mode as output, and we have a digital writing high. Digital write high basically means, hey, pump, run at full blast. Let's turn on the alternative now. It's these two for loops. Now, the pump's full blast is 255. This first for loop starts at 50. It grows all the way to 255 in increments of 20 until it runs to 255. This is an analog write rather than a digital write. Like instead of yes, no, it's shades of gray. And we use the variable i to hold those numbers. Now the next for loop you see is kind of the opposite of what we just looked at. The integer i starts at 255 and it decreases by 20 every loop until it reaches 50. And then it starts all over again. This behavior sounds like human breathing. It's not actually inhaling and exhaling. It's just inhaling at different rates. And that's what you're about to see in the next part of this video. So let's turn off this loop and give it a go. So now my pump is leading you through some breathing exercises. Inhale, exhale. <laughs> Here's the little band-aid out of beach ball. It's a much gentler way to inflate, isn't it? Woo, it's all coming undone. Here's another leak. I'm really surprised by how strong this is. <laughs> okay. I patched it. Both of these seams have failed. They've popped open. But this one's staying really strong. I want to see what it'll take to destroy it. <laughs> I've made a shape that's very difficult to use on my pump. I think I need to get some tubing. This thing is strong. <laughs> All right, this is amazing. My hands are not strong enough to match this seam. The patches just keep breaking open wherever I try to fix them. Something else that I noticed here is that when you put the vinyl cement on, I mentioned that it warps the vinyl. Well, it warps the vinyl so much that it changes shape depending on where you've made it weak during the inflation. So there might be some opportunity to have some very strange, like, blobby forms out of this kind of material combination, vinyl and vinyl cement. All right, one hypothesis I have from today is that I've applied too much glue. I wonder if I apply less glue more evenly that the bond will set more quickly and reliably. I also learned that I probably left these little channels a little too small. You saw me using the paintbrush handle to kind of 
you know, set a jig and make sure that there could be airflow in between them, which did work. We saw it work, but it didn't work well enough. And that means that probably the pressure that required the air to pass on that little channel was too much pressure to maintain the integrity of these seams. Something that will be really helpful is when I get my pressure sensors working and I can get this pump to be responsive to the conditions inside of my inflatable. So it will be able to tell when it comes to a breaking point and it'll be able to stop and leave the inflation as it is, which will help me because it won't destroy my prototypes in the way that this has been destroyed. Destroyed prototypes are not a bad thing, they're a learning, so there's really no failures. So what's next? I'd like to have different code to run on this pump to make it maybe a softer and more gentle inflation. What else is next? I'd really like to have a big prototype. I want to build something big. This is for an inflatable floating architecture project, so I'd like to have something, if not at architecture scale, maybe like dog architecture scale? I don't know. What else is coming up next? I'm going to get my squeeze bottles. I have two kinds of eyedroppers coming in, and I also have a pastry bottle. I have like an icing bottle coming in. It's a little accordion icing bottle. If you want to learn more about the code that I used or the circuit that I made here with these electronics, go to my website. It's linked in the description. It's beckymarshall.com slash inflatables.html and I'm going to have a lot of details about the research that I've done for this project and uh, resources that you can use if you'd like to recreate parts of it. All right, I'm going to call it a day. Look at this sad thing. See you next time.